This is an unplanned video. I wasn't planning on doing this video, but this just came out of the blue, so I'm doing a video. This is an Omron PLC. These are used in industrial control applications, that kind of thing, machinery, control systems, or what have you. And they basically take AC input, and you've got a bunch of switched outputs and control signals and stuff like that, depending on what they're used for. There'll be inputs along here, and these have got some outputs along the bottom here. Relay contacts inside. Now this one has got an issue. It stopped controlling something. So a particular device that runs, it's like an air pump. It wasn't powering up anymore. Um, someone had already checked the pump, and the pump was working fine. The actual pump has got no problems. So I'm thinking, okay, must be a supply problem. Traced it back. Now, this did, used to have a different control system in it, made by Keatronics, who I'd actually researched previously and, and reverse engineered some of it, and actually been in contact with them. And they actually gave me all the information I had on their controller because the person that designed it was has gone and is obsolete, and they wouldn't really care about them anymore. And they were being really helpful, and that was great. So they sent me everything for it. So at the time I was able to fix it. Since then the controller has been made obsolete and it got replaced by somebody else with this thing instead. And that's fine. PLC is exactly what it's meant for. Slight problem though. Can you see what it is? Um, it's had a bad day. Now normally you just go, oh that's knackered. Buy a new one. Drop a new one in there very true that's exactly what needs to be done but this needs to be going tonight yeah I don't know if I can make it go tonight but I'm going to pull it apart and have a look at the very least we'll see what damage is in there I tried to unscrew the terminals to get these wires off and um, the whole terminal block just spun around inside the casing so that's not a great sign I think that basically the circuit board around it's carbonized we'll open up and find out Nothing to see there. Okay, well, let's pop the thing open. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, that's not good, is it? That is, oh, it's not good. How's that for arcing? So I was actually using this, these three outputs here. This first one wasn't being used. That's obviously the one which had the bad day. The second output and the third output were also being used. And you can see that's eating that one away as well. Yeah, this is a goner. But I still need to try and figure out how to program it. Because if you get a new PLC, I need to know the programming for it. There's a programming port on the front there, but that's not going to help me because I don't have the terminals or the programming or the software. I don't know. You can usually program these things from the front panel as well. Yeah, this is not looking good at all. Yeah, even the relay's gone. Look. Wow. Let's pull this top header off. That is not good. Is that cobweb down there or is that something else? Don't know. It's all kinds of, but that relay's melted. I mean, it could be, it could be this started from the relay. Here, yeah, the relay started arcing, then it spread from there, or it could be from the contacts. Now, so when I actually removed this thing from the panel, all the screws were loose. So, um, yeah, that made me think it's probably a case of the screws coming loose. It started arcing in the terminals, and it spread from there. And it's entirely possible it could have gone upwards. Um, I mean, the fact it's eaten away that corner of that relay, the fact that is gone. That makes me suspect relay as well though. So yeah, there's no fixing this. Well not on board. I mean you could technically unmount the relays and, and have remote relays. That's possible. I'm in a bit of a bind with this thing. Because say these three outputs were being used. I need to consider options for this now because we do kind of need to get this thing going. But as you can see this board is not serviceable. Is that a copper? Yeah the copper's bulging up there. Yeah, that copper is detached from the board. You got carbon. Carbon is conductive, so if you've got conductive carbon on the board then that's also really bad. That in relay there has been spared because it hasn't wasn't being used, but this one is being affected as well. Like this is 
Mm. What I think I need to do is try and strip off all this damaged stuff and repower it and try and get the programming off it and at least figure out what the programming was, maybe. Maybe I can do that for the screen. I hope I can do it for the screen. Not good. Now there is actually no high voltage around here and this is high voltage connected through the relays. So the relay is obviously controlled by the microcontroller. The coil contacts are up here. And these are the terminals and these are the relay contacts down here. That pair of contacts there. Well, is it there and there? Pair of contacts there and there. There was another one here. Pair of contacts there, pair of contacts there. Fitting external low voltage relays, well, low voltage from the output of the microcontroller, is a possibility. This one's still serviceable. That one's still usable. That not, that is. If I reprogram this one to over there, that'd be something, I suppose. But then I've still got this output, so I could put one remote relay in and do it that way. It'd be a temporary fix. It wouldn't be a long-term thing. Just for the weekend, because it's Friday now, and it's a long weekend, then this needs to be working. So, yeah, I could do a temporary fix. Well, I've just desoldered it. If it so happens, there we go. It's coming out. Yeah, that is not good, is it? Yeah, that's really, really not good. Um, this, the pin's still a pin in the ball just there, so I'm taking that one out. Basically, what I have to do to make this safe and usable is cut out this piece to prevent it from conducting. Yeah, even this one looks like it's got wet, actually. It looks brown. Okay, well, let's just um, see what I'm going to do about this. Well, I've cut that out now and started cleaning up around the ball there. It looks like it's got wet over there, it's brown, and in fact it got brown over here. It's almost like water's got in there, I mean, maybe that's what the problem was. It art from water being in there. Maybe that's the original issue, water got in. I don't know, maybe it's a bug, could be bugs in there, but... Anyway, that's also bad, it's, it's burnt through the side of the relay there. And obviously this terminal's naked, so those two are good. Only that one's programmed. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put this thing back together to a point where I can try and use it and try and see if I can get the programming off it, find out how it's programmed. If I can find out how it's programmed, then I can sort something out. I could even sit down the Arduino program. I could use a 240 volt down to 5 volt power supply, which I have, and a Arduino, which I have, and a Arduino module with all the relays on it, which I have. So I actually have options to recreate this if I know how it's programmed. So let me just see if I can do that. Right, I've got a cable hooked up to it. As you can see, now because these are burnt out, it doesn't actually matter because these are just passed through through these relays, so you know it's knackered. It's still safe to do this. The 240 volts only on the top side for the power supply. I'm hoping I can actually read from the display what the programming is. I don't know much about PLCs. I've had very little to do with them, so I don't even know if I can read it. But, but I'm hoping I can. So we'll start off with powering it up. Does it go bang? It's pulling out almost one watt and it hasn't gone bang and it says run and it's this had a relay click so it's trying to control the relays and it's got a lock symbol there hmm okay can I do anything at all monitor stop parameters uh -huh. It does say stuff there. Can't you see it better on camera? So TXSA trigger 10 reset 10. Okay. Is there a next step? Audio T1. So time is zero. T1, T2, T3. So these are the timer configurations. So it's 10 seconds in, 10 seconds off, it looks like. I don't actually understand what's doing. Let's try and find a manual for this thing and let you have a look. So we've got the readings there of what the timers are. Okay, so is there something else we can do? Set clock, language, other, let's look at other, password, backlight, has a backlight. 
Oh, it requires the password. Okay. Great. System info. Okay. Model, modem. No, it doesn't have modem in there. And it's got the password there. So. Pet monitor. I wonder what the password is. Could it be 1234? Could it be that simple? No. It's not all zeros. Um, hmm. I could be here forever trying to guess this. Obviously, whoever did this didn't want to mess with. Damn it. That could be problematic. So I just removed this other relay which is also damaging, see how this arcing is straight underneath the board here which is exactly why this could no longer be used for that section because that is going to end up shorting out so that whole section there basically has to be cut out and not used so because it's not going to be used at all now and it's not going to be anywhere near any main stuff I'm perfectly happy just to leave it like that Now you can actually see on the top side here we've got these little transistors and diodes, so you've got a TR and a diode and we've got the same thing over there, TR on a diode and in the centre here, TR on the diode. So those are what the transistor is switching the relay. So the microcontroller is switching the transistor to switch the relay. And the diode dares be across the relay coil as a snubber to stop the high voltage spikes in the relay switch off. So all I've actually got to do is hook into these terminals and run those to an external relay. Now because this relay here is undamaged and that's perfectly fine, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to modify the circuitry around here to run this relay from one of these. So I think I'm probably going to move over one of these. I'm not quite sure which one yet. Probably the most damaged one. I'll probably move the most damaged one over here. Disconnect the circuitry from this one which is already feeding it. Power it from this one instead. So you can see maybe you can just see there's a little wire popping up over there to turn the transistor. So I can either do it two ways. I can take the transistor out, like take the transistor out and run that wire to that one and that'll be it. Most likely I'm going to double check that. So that wire going through there is going to the diode. Try and give us a bit of a clean. Marginally better. Yes, yeah, so there's wire going to the diode, which is apparently going straight to the transistor as well. So I think I'm actually pretty safe there. I'll have to look at it more closely. It's a bit hard to see because it's so damn dirty. If you look at this one over here, you can see the diode is going to that terminal. Right, so that diode there will be doing the same with this one, the equivalent of that. The other side, see it's going across, you can see one terminal there is going to there, and the other terminal is going to there. And then that transistor there is actually switching this relay. In the worst case, I'll just run these two connections out to external relays, and that'll be the end of that. Anyway, I'll figure that out and I'll come back once we've got it done. Right, it's a crude drawing of what's on this board. So we've got four relays, we've got a transistor driving each relay, and interestingly only two of the relays have got snubber diodes on them, the other two do not have them. That's really weird, I'm surprised it's done that way. TR3, TR4, TR5, and that's TR6 down here, I forgot to label it, but it's TR6, drive each relay in turn. And so D8 and D9 are the snubbers for relay 2 and relay 3. Interestingly, Relay 2 and Relay 3 are the two we've got to replace. Now, my plan, you can see I've cut some more of the board out, is to remove TR3 and link TR4's pins here, I'll do it on the back of the board, link TR4 to that relay. So then Relay 1 will become Relay 2. Right? That gives me one relay back. Now, Relay 3, and I can do an external relay on this one now, because it's got a snubber on there, that's a good thing too, because I, obviously it's a good idea to have snubbers on relays. So I can then just run wires out from these two connections here, from that coil, through to the external relay, and then run external relay on the DIN rail. So I've got a relay like this, which is pulled from an old piece of machinery. When bits of gear get scrapped, it's a bit of a free-for-all for you know grabbing whatever you want, and sometimes you can grab bits like this. So I've got a couple of these. I don't have many. I should actually get some more next time I scrap a machine. This is 24-volt relay coil, and it's not exactly the right one, 
it's close. Uh, ratings. 240 volt relay is rated at 12 amps. Right, so it's rated at 12 amps. So it's actually four amps more grunty than the original relay. So I'm not worried about that at all. It's because it's got a DIN rail in there. I can snap this onto the DIN rail and just run wiring to it. So the original wires that used to go to the bottom of the PLC, run them straight into this block and then run two wires out to go to the former relay positions just there. And just run the wires from there out to this. And that will oh, these get it working again. I mean the actual electronic PLC side part of it is fine. I couldn't figure out the password to unlock it, so I've tried several passwords, I even looked at the manual to see if it was like a default password. That didn't work. So it gave an example of a password, I put that one in, that one didn't work. So whoever installed this thing put one on it, which is a sensible thing to do, because it stops people playing with it and accidentally making a mistake and messing it up. So I do not have a problem with them putting a password on. It's just a shame that they didn't like write it inside the case or something, you know, it's like, oh yeah, here's the password, so if you ever need to put it apart and have a look, there it is. But there's nothing noted anywhere, you know, they could have like pulled this apart, written inside the case. So if you ever had a problem with it, you could, you know, open it up and have a look. Anyway, that is what it is, it's just one of these things. So I've got a plan to go forward. It is still a bit of a bodge, I'm not happy with it. I mean, realistically, you could just disable the whole bottom half of this board and run external relays, entire relay bank externally and that would be the end of it. But yeah, you know. Anyway, I can recover it, so that's the main thing. I'm going to get working on this because I need to get this thing working tonight. And it's already getting dark. Right, there's my solution. That's all done, I've remapped that relay onto Q1. Well, Q0, so Q1 is now Q0. I've shifted it over. And I've got an external relay here to go into the board, which is the Q2 relay. So, um, yeah, done. Then rail mounted, so that makes it easier. I'll drop a thing in there, run those two wires used to go through those terminals through this relay, which is those two terminals there, or those two there, either one. And um, that's done. That should be good, I hope. Yeah, we'll see how it goes.